influence, which is kind of like why we're dependent on new media to always regenerate that. And we need a way to regenerate old media so we can make films like that. But final thing is that there are independent films, and a lot of that stuff, like from the 40s, is going on if you watch the independent films. But yeah, they're pushed to a subculture, you know, not the mass people are going to see those. They won't put them in the theaters, they won't promote them. Pushing shit like that, though, requires leverage. It's like what Gary was saying earlier about ridiculing people, which I completely fucking agree with, but it requires some level of leverage in society. You're not going to shoehorn intelligent movies and, and have them be popular. Like, let's say one elite guy takes over Hollywood and starts making real think pieces. You know what I mean? Talk about the fucking movie crash of all crashes, you know what I mean? People would just stop fucking going to the movies, and then somebody else would come along and go, hey, I'm going to make Joey Jerkoff and the Magical Jerkoff Tree too," and, and then everybody's right back to, you know, it just take the stupidity takes right back over. Well, that's why I'm saying that we have to find some sort of compatible with our capitalist ideal model that enables us to do what the Russians did for, say, ballet and the arts and all of that kind of crap. We have to subsidize it. That means we almost have to pay people to watch it. Okay? We have to pay people to be edified and to have a knowledge and to be a civilized human being. Or we have to encourage it through the fact that they'll be humiliated if they aren't civilized. Like, you almost have to have a, I'm a member of civilization. I passed a 10-question um, you know, ten questions like, how round is the world? Or, you know, we, can, we ask people ten stupid questions and see if they can, who's buried in Grant's tomb? You know, and see if they can pass the ten simple questions that mean I'm part of civilization. I mean, we'll make yeah, prizes. Simple, we'll give people prizes. You know, give them prizes for being a, civiliz a civilizationalist. What the hell is the round? It's a joke, dickhead. Okay, go to Wikipedia and type in joke. Okay, and then read the description of what a fucking joke is. And then cut your fucking throat and die, you stupid cunt. Okay, so what I want to say, Gary, the system is pretty close in America. Look. So anyway... The, um, okay, in, the, in America, the, one of the good things we did is when they, they gave eminent domain to the cable companies, they insisted on cable access and various other things. So that, that is a key chain. We should have that more all over. There has to be micro-broadcaster, TV micro-broadcasters and everything else, satellite channels from community colleges and stuff like this, you know? And so that's the key thing. Then you produce things, people just produce them themselves, but you also pay for kids and grants. And because the, the alternate version is the BBC. The BBC was great for years, and the problem is, as they came in to compete with it, I did believe they had to let private people compete with it, but then it sort of suffers. There's a problem. I think the way to compete with the private is let the stations you know, come up, actually promote them, instead of stamping down all those public access people, if you really had somebody like those old SNL skits, or no, um, whatever that one was, SCTV, you know, where they started the, the Bill and Ted stuff, if you actually, in the places in New York and stuff where you actually got to have radical, crazy public access, whereas most places you'd have a couple of that and they'd stomp them down. If you actually supported that plus, you have university classes that are, you know, by the educational system and grants, they're paid to make movies. If you approach the BBC from that direction, you'd be better, because the BBC really declined. It's kind of shitty now. And that's the way you could do it. And it'd be mixed private market, right? Like individuals that are saying, well, I'm buying a camera for $500, and I'm making a video for $1,000, and I'm making my own thing, and then I can say fuck and do whatever, and other people going, okay, well, I've got a grant from the Pew Foundation, and I can't cut. And that whole thing would mix up and make a public media. And again, even if only you know, 40% were watching it, it'd be a more sustainable version of what we've ha had with PBS, which is pretty good, I think, but it's failing us, you know, like the BBC. 
Yeah, I don't know if that model's the best. I'm just saying I think that it's got to be more aggressive, and I kind of went with my idea of having infomercials that finance themselves. But I think intellectuals would be willing to invest in intellectualism, so I think they could even finance part of it. But I, again, it's back to public money. I think it's got to be a, a mission of government. If government can't protect its civilization, then government's failing. So, I mean, yeah, we really should be able to vote for the idea of let's protect our civilization. It's Paul's turn. Paul's got his big heavy hand up again. I mean, once again, Pyro, I think you've got a rosy view of this micro-broadcasting shit. If, you, if We already have it. You want a preview of what micro-broadcasting on cable would look like? Fucking look at YouTube, okay? It would be a tiny little minority of good, meaty content and a bunch of unwatchable pop culture bullshit, people jumping around, lip-syncing to songs, doing movie reviews, you know what I mean? Like, so... And like even worse than that, even worse that. than that, it's going to be controlled by these little shyster local governments who are going to fucking put their little propaganda shit on there, okay? Like in our local community, I couldn't get on my public access channel, okay? They illegally right, the broad prevented me from broadcasting on public access television, and when I went to fucking court, what does the superior court judge tell me to do? Buy my own television network. I mean, that's the fucking answer you get from a fucking judge. Buy your own TV network. What the fuck? Why do you... I told the bitch. Why the fuck are they calling it public access television? Do you understand what the word public access means? It doesn't mean the access is the public can watch it. It means the public can be on it, you dumb bitch. And then she threatened to throw me in jail, a bitch. To answer that question, first of all, I think we need to learn to have better signal-to-noise filters where we can filter out noise. So I don't think that there's a problem on the Internet or even YouTube of finding people of interest to you. You just have to, like, with Google, figure out these magic phrases or luck upon people and look at their group of friends. Those are the two options. So that's useful for me and everybody to learn how to do that. Now, on the public access on broadcast and cable, yeah, they fucked it over. And luckily, the Internet is here as kind of an end run about around that. And again, I think that even though you're going to get 80% bullshit, if you can filter out from the 20%, the 1% of that 20% that you're interested in, it is possible with computer technology, right? So, it, so that works out. People well, that, that know how to filter that shit out are not the people we're talking about, though. We're not talking about people that have good bullshit to content filters, okay? Like, I, we're, we're j it's just a cyclical fucking argument. All right, but what if, Paul, what if I was a billionaire, okay? And I financed a new show on cable TV, and it was called Thunderdome, all right? And two debaters would go in, and only one debater would leave, <laughs> okay? All right, yeah, they didn't fight that the actual death, okay? But there was a mechanism where they played for 50 grand, let's say, and, you know, it's about who made the best argument, and blah, 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 blah. And I think you could sell that. I think people would watch it like they watch American Idol. I think you can make it as consumable as American Idol, because you can give it personality, you can give it underdogs, you can give it everything a sports event has, you can give it drama, you can make it fucking interesting. At the same time, you can shove this education into it. Okay, just like people learn hand-eye coordination by playing video games, they can learn through watching TV that's entertaining. So I think it can be even done in a free market, and all you need is somebody to fucking goddamn do it. Somebody to, 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 to the seed money to make it happen. Yeah, call me a cynic, and I'm sorry, I'll let Pyro go in a second. Call me a cynic, but I think that, that, that format would work only if the people were debating about useless fucking horse shit. Like, if they were debating about whether, uh, you know, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Aniston were going to last, or whatever the fuck. Oh, well, I, I think if you were yeah. debating abortion, or you're debating something really important, whether Obama's a scumbag or something, I think that would be pretty, I think people would watch. I think they would, I think they would fucking watch. Put Glenn Beck in there with, with some lefty guy, and <laughs> let him fight it out, and people are going to watch. You know, and they could even give them tools, like, you know, a little, they could have, like, a, a little podium, and they could, like, shoot a fucking foam boxing glove at each other's face when the other guy's talking, or they get extra points and do extra little gimmicks. I mean, you could gimmick the fucking thing up to make the fucking buffoons watch it, and accidentally they'll get educated.
Okay, personally, I, I think this is one of those working class versus privileged class kind of a thing where um, I embrace the uh, American Gladiators and that Wipeout show and all of the, you know, and, and, and cops. I think that the way forward is a, is a Bill Hicks kind of, you know, you it, just be self-conscious when you're indulging in watching cops. Don't, you know, don't just watch and go, rrr, rrr, but realize, why does that moron say to the cop he can come in when the cop doesn't have a warrant? Because the cop couldn't have arrested him, you know, and learn and from people's court and watch those things and just realize, geez, I'm just like everybody. I like cheese, like Gary says. And it and just doesn't mean you don't also like the intellectual aspect when you see, geez, these guys should watch the ACLU arguments about how to deal with cops because then they would realize you don't have to let the cop in when they ask you if you come in. You know, so that even I personally, I love the movies and all that stuff, and I feel like it's a cultural identification as a working class poor person had to work, blah, 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 for generations then, you know, it's like, I can go ahead and watch escapist comedy, and my only responsibility is to realize, this is escapist, I'm watching Benny Hill, he's fucking funny, look. I know, yeah. but we, we know that we can't let people I feed themselves, you know they'll just keep eating the potato chips and the ice cream, so you know that somebody has to be the responsible parent, and somebody has issues. to incentivize them to eat their fucking meal, okay, to eat the thing with the goddamn vitamins in it, all right, so you do have to incentivize this shit, you can't just let people eat their junk food, you have to sit there and say, we'll give you 50 extra cents if you eat this vegetable over here. Look at how ridiculous this fucking argument is, like, yeah, we need to incentivize people to fucking think about dumb shit. Okay, can you get, imagine it like, hey, honey, bring me, a, yeah, now bring me a Paps Blue Ribbon and a hundred man dinner so uh, I can but, think but, but about Paul, the come on, Paul, Paul, you know that they are educable. Okay, they are educable. You remember the educables in high school? Now, they weren't really educable, okay? You know, they really weren't educable, okay? They were fucking retarded. But these other buffoons are educable, okay? A year or two, you could subtly get it into their head, and they would say, Oh, I really am a big, fat, stupid pig. <laughs> yeah, I really am. I mean, they could figure it out. I was, talking, I was talking more about, like, Pyro saying that you've got to try and change change the way people think about the stupid shit. And I just Yeah, no, that, that isn't going to happen. About, no, they have to be smart first. Be smart right, you have to yeah, educate them first. Imagine, yeah, I can't fucking imagine a dumbass going... I want to watch some cops and think about the ACLU implica implications and the rise of police power in, in the United States. No, no that's not that's easy. easy. I want to answer that. Uh, yeah, we you have a good point, but let me take up this example that Gary brought up. I remember when Fox Network came out. I remember when Fox News, uh, Fox came out and they started with some things like uh, Tracy Ullman and um, the first season of of uh, Married with Children. Okay, and, and they were definitely with Married with Children going for supposedly a lowbrow thing. I think there was a subtle positive message to that, just, just to the fact that you had a fourth network that would go, we're going to break the rules of toilet humor and everything else, and it was really much more insightful. Just the first season, if you've watched, if you were there for the first season before they just became a parody of themselves and, you know, became a Murdoch page three thing. You know, there was actually, like the Simpsons, you know, some satire about culture and stuff. That is kind of so so-called lowbrow humor that is very enjoyable. There's been a lot of that, you know, psychos in love and crazy you know, uh, B movies and independent movies. I think that the lowbrow humor changes the culture pretty effectively compared to a lot of intellectual things. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to you have to migrate both. You have to use all the weapons we have, and I'm just saying we're not using any of the weapons because it's on nobody's agenda because it doesn't make fucking money. This system runs on money, and guess what? Knowledge isn't going to be distributed for free. And smart people do not click ads. 
So, yeah, the smart people aren't going to be fed. The dumb people aren't accidentally going to see the smart content because the smart content isn't going to fucking exist because capitalism is not a model for financing intellectualism. Yeah. Guess we all agree now. We're yeah, we're totally fucked. Unless, like, Bill well, Gates right. grows a conscience, we're totally fucked. I mean, there's this infrastructure issue which requires government, both That's art true. and science. Art, art and science, and to a certain degree, things like roads. But the private industry can be incentivized to do all of those things. But basically, when it, you know the road stuff, you can they're going to get contracts and they're going to do it because you're taxing. So it's basically a centralized thing. Infrastructure, including intellectual infrastructure like science, research, and to a certain degree, art, you know, are naturally subsidized by a collective. It's just true. And not all art, but the art that's going to make your city decent because there's at least something, even if it's some stupid modern art in the park that represents where you were in history at that moment, you know, that's going to be the government. Well, well look, look, we wouldn't have public libraries. In in, we wouldn't have, it, but it's also science. We wouldn't have public libraries if it wasn't for the fluke event of Carnegie, you know, saying, well, i got to give this, I'm going to die anyway, i got a ton of money, okay, let's do this thing, this is a good thing to do, and put my name on it, and blah, blah, blah. And, and and so so I'm just saying that's what we need. We need an event like that to 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 create this opportunity, to take advantage of this opportunity. But that's the sad truth is we you know we can talk until we're whatever, and yeah, it's just not going to happen talking. We need some way to make it happen. Jerry, wait a second. Jerry, we're really lucky right now. We have George Soros. We have Bill Gates, who I fucking hate as a capitalist. But as a philanthropist is doing the crazy Oh, fuck thing, you. Like, fuck I you. Fuck you. As a philanthropist, he's also failed. He's a manipulative worm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, I have a friend who was an activist, uh, who was a worker dealing with a the AIDS epidemic in Africa. When she was over there, she says Bill Gates paid to smuggle generic AIDS drugs in. He right, right, right. Whatever, 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 whatever. Band-Aid and, and, you know, nothing, nothing, I nothing, nothing, AIDS, nothing. I mean, it's just a waste of... I believe of that if I'm praising Gates, it's reluctantly, okay? So I really believe that... Yeah, well, whatever. You can really I believe whatever you want. It's all PR bullshit. It's like Michael Jackson giving you away $10,000 to breast cancer, you know, and getting an award and all this other bullshit. It's just a big pile of shit. agree with that. Just, but that's true of Carnegie. Carnegie was a fucking... I didn't person. say Carnegie was a good guy. I said it was just a fluke yeah. event, okay, of circumstance where the thing. asshole had to dump some money... Okay, and he dumped it into this institution that took the fuck off and became a, a, a fucking vital um, resource for the human race for 50 years. I'm saying that's happening with Gates too. I hate him. He's a lot like Carnegie. Gives. Well, I'm just saying it's not happening with Gates because everything Gates is investing in is crap. He's not investing in what we need, is which is the alternative to capitalism. We need a Gates that's going to break capitalism, not a Gates that's going to feed capitalism. What about Soros? What about Soros? Yeah, well, Soros stole all his money from Indonesia, right? So he stole all his money by ripping the fuck out of a bunch of little, a, bu a bunch of little poor Asians. All right. I'm not going to argue with you about it, okay? He, he was an evil fuck. And yes, it's very nice of him to give away... I just want to know your opinion. Let's not argue. My opinion is great, but I don't see any, I don't see any end result, right? He has a $2 million contest for somebody who has a great idea. Who's going to judge this great idea, right? I've seen these contests before. I've entered contests yeah, like this before. The fix is fucking in. It has nothing to do with a great idea. He'll elect his own shoe president. That's what he'll fucking do in the end. He'll say my shoe is a great idea. I think my shoe is the best shoe in the fucking world. Yeah, I'll pay my shoe two million dollars. I forget. Pretty 
forget what you think. I'm sure I've asked you before. Sorry, but what do you think of medical marijuana? I seem to think you're not that impressed with it, but what do you think of that? As a well, it's a nice gimmick. You go for it. Problem. Fine, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I mean, yeah, I'm really not interested in fucking people's drug rights, okay? We got really sure, big I'm fucking problems, right? and marijuana is the least of our big fucking problems. Well, yeah, we need some more potheads. Yeah, no, I don't think so. That's not going to solve the fucking problem. Well, Soros, Soros is for, like, democracy in the Ukraine, where he's from Eastern Europe and stuff. So, I mean, I think he's pretty justifiable. You have to be right-wing to, to, like, bitch about him. He did destroy the economy of Indonesia because they were corrupt. They were propping up their thing, and he saw it, and he took advantage of it. Yeah, I whatever. Mean, yeah, he took advantage of socialists and just totally turned, ripped them off royally. So I don't want to argue it, Pyro. I really don't want to argue. Oh, my God. I don't want to argue it. Those were fake socialists in Indonesia, Gary. Yeah, take they the billionaire's the word for it. They were fake socialists. Trust the billionaire. The billionaire knows best. <laughs> yeah. They, those fakers, those fakers, yeah. <laughs> Where's the Soros Foundation? Where I don't think it hurt Indonesia in the long run. Some of the ruling class then in Indonesia lost Oh, please, Indonesia you do not want to live in Indonesia. It's got like the highest, it's like next to Afghanistan, it's got the highest infant mortality in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. I'm not, I said I don't want to argue with Pyro because you're an idiot on this subject, so I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> the billionaire said so. Well, what about, what about Joseph Kennedy or whatever his name was? Okay, he, he made Bury him again. Bury him five times. I say we should have a funeral for him every fucking day. Every fucking day we should be Bury Joe Kennedy Day. But wait a second, but then he made insider trading illegal. He's like, wow, I found this really good thing. It wasn't fair. I made a lot of money. Let's not make it legal. But, you know, what, what well, do you well, do well, There's no point in even talking about these things. The there's no point the in talking about the Kennedys and the rest of these assholes because they're not a solution to anything. They're obviously compromised figures, okay? They have no real principles. They have you know, opportunistic principles. Okay, if it's to their advantage in a particular moment, no, I mean the they're for Kennedy. it. If it, they have to pay a price, no they're Kennedy against it. Who, what? No, but like Carnegie was an yeah. asshole to the worker, and then he said, I'll make libraries so they can get educated so they don't have to work for fuckers like uh, me. Again, who, I, mean, I am not applauding Jefferson. Carnegie. Oh, I don't free, like I Carnegie. Free. I think Carnegie should have been squashed with a steamroller. Okay, I hate like his fucking guts. I'm saying I mean, we wouldn't have public yeah, libraries yeah, except for this stupid too. fluke of history. That was my point. That it was a fluke of fucking history that created a brilliant institution. And I'm saying that should not be the model. The model should be more rational than that. We should, we should progressively acquire things by something better than fluke. Well, it is, but there's a lot of those flukes, the whole, you know, kings having people that they, that they disagreed with sometimes, that they were just in the habit of sponsoring scientists and thinkers. And sometimes they got one that... Oh, that uh, Pyro, I'm not going to argue this. Them. I'm against it in principle. You don't get it? I'm against fluke. <laughs> as a way of accomplishing anything in principle. I think we should accomplish something rationally. I'm asking you exactly for that reason, because I totally agree. I have exactly the same realization, like, over my life of, I like public libraries. Why does it take, you know, a guy like that? I like Stanford University, except for why does it take the guy that it's named after and it's still so private. I like a lot of these things these guys gave out of guilt, but I don't think fucking people over and then giving something little back, some little portion of your profit back out of guilt is very commendable, but then some of the people don't give anything. You know, I mean, it's like some people give, who is that guy, Getty, 
just, he didn't give anything, but he gave a neat museum. And even that is like, well, we got a museum. It's like, I don't know. It's like, thank you, Mr. Asshole. I find it fascinating, you know? And you obviously... Yeah, well, don't even go well, into Getty, Getty because, yeah, they, all the Getty fucking descendants were all fucking lunatics. <laughs> God, See, God. I read this book by Getty, an autobiography or whatever, probably ghost written, but it was funny, like... Because he had this thing where one of his relatives was kidnapped and he got sent to New York and it's like, forget it, it's just, he's just selfish. And he still was confused this, or, or, or accused this uh, relative of being in on it, cutting his own ear off to get some money. And it's like this Yeah, guy well, the whole so fucking psychotic. family was fucking certifiably insane. The I mean, whole fucking <laughs> family, it's, it's hysterical, really. But, you know, and then... I'm going to buy a bunch of art and rape the world. Ah, put it in a museum. What do you think of that? It's like, well, I think you're an asshole, but the museum also kind of, okay, well, kind of interesting. You know, it's like, but, you know, Carnegie's a better example because public libraries, he really achieved that, which he was a big-time asshole, and yet that is like changed America for the better. Public library idea, that's not universal. And in America, it was for a while. Now it's getting screwed up. Well, well, now it's old hat, so now it's old useless, so yeah, the money should be going into the internet. Um, we should have a public internet. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Something other than this corporoxity. Yeah. Eepa beepa, e no eepa be eepa beepa man is that's a YouTube video or something. You're in the wrong channel. Hey Gary, um, are you gonna kick me if I ask you? So I, I only saw, I've been really busy. So I saw that you admitted that being mad at uh, Zomaga and Chris is never gonna work out, even if you had a right to. So without kicking me, because I care about uh, Chris and. To a lesser degree, you. <laughs> um, so, how did that work out as far as, So, you're cool with that? You realize that this shit, and then you got to buy it, or what? Can I please? No, no, I, I mean, I didn't realize you're anything, anything actually. She just begged so fucking much that I said, okay, fuck it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know. Oh, you've got to be thankful for could Yeah, so now I could take the high road to see because I could say, well, look, it's obvious the chick is just so fucking horny for me that it's okay now. See, the relationship is okay now because the chick has proven that she is the one keeping the relationship together. So I no longer can be looked at as the dirty old man and the lech and all that kind of shit because the chick wants it. Okay, so yeah, that's all. She, she allowed me to save face, and so then it was okay. Yeah, Karina's just great at jumping on fires. She really is. She'll, she'll be like, you got, got a problem? Yeah, Karina will jump on it. You know, she's just, you know, she really is something. She's funny. But yeah, her devotion to me is just amazing. for straightening you out by showing her because she's such a sincere person, I Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, she's just, she's just such a... You know, she thinks she. She told you. Yeah. Well, whatever. Like I, I, I could. Like uh, I just. I wish I could take the PM she sent me. <laughs> you know, it's like I just so pwn her with that PM. Oh, I just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I win. I win. I win. But she pwned you by the fact that you'd be smart enough not to. See, so there you go. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, we pwned each other. So it doesn't matter. It's all over anyway. So that's good. No, it's engagement. Fuck poning and stuff. It's an engagement. You know, she actually <laughs> cares about your ideas. Interpersonal stuff happens. It's not what defines a relationship. That's one of the good things. There's an unreal thing about online relationships, but the real part is that it's intellectual, and sometimes then it's the interpersonal things that show themselves as superficial, and there's a connection of ideas and intellect that you know, supersedes that, frankly. Yeah, I know, but it's, 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 it's really hard to do this this personal thing, unpersonal thing, you know what I mean? Because it really was weird seeing Karina, and it was really, a, you know, huge conflicts of interest, because you just don't know, you don't even know what to feel. You know, it's just, it's a really, really difficult. Yeah, I work. I have someone in Poland, so I need to step on it. I work. I have someone in Poland, 
stay on the stick and realize today extremely Yeah, many times No, she was here at least I, I, you know, probably an hour. <coughs> You know, she would have been here two hours if they would have showed up on time. Um, but it didn't matter because, like, the dork was here the whole time. So, yeah, it kind of fucked the whole thing. I agree with you on that. I can see why that would screw it up. But, and not because there was another person there. Like, if I was there, it would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all three of us could have held hands and had a special moment. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Oh, it would have been more on subject because Dev Shell is sort of a fake, real reality TV, worse than the Peach, who also has a little bit of a the resident kind of a I'm polished here and this is my best side type thing. So it was particularly bad, I think. It was particularly like hard to deal with. And I did take your final comment of being humid as from you and considering who it was as a compliment. He didn't get any of that, you know. So whatever. I but think anyway, he got um, it, though. I think um, he got it. I mean, he got my smiling when I said it. I mean, he got it. He got it. No, no, he got it. He got it. But his other self, when he's going to think about the video. Anyway, I don't really want to talk about it. I. I no, look, I'm, look, I'm just want to make this one thing clear, though. I don't think it has anything to do with any real offense, okay? Peach hates my guts, okay? We had a big fight. We really don't like each other. And he made the video just so, you know, they could they could do this little hatchet job as revenge. And that's all it was. I mean, it was, there was no... There was no pretense of an Wait. excuse. It was just an excuse for them... I want to say one It was thing. just an excuse for them to fuck my visit with Karina. And that's all it was. Well, okay, I will say one thing in devil's advocacy. He did do, his, his opinion was not satire, but he paid attention and has watched your style. He put in fuck yous and various, it was subtle because he was talking about his own opinion, but he slipped in things that were homage. So, but on the other hand, I would have taken it as a shitty thing too. But anyway, I don't know even how we got on that. The point is that, yes, I have met people in real life and I've met people, I think when you develop an online relationship with them first, it's going to stay an online relationship enhanced. And I have made real friends with people that I develop political blogs and help them out and things like that on. seen them many times, and yet it's still weird when you lose track how it can be. It's not quite like, and on the other hand, I've met people online right away after meeting them online because they were local, and develop an in-person relationship. To me, it's totally different. So I met both. Really? On the other hand, one of my really? best friends of life was a guy I met on a, in like 1983 on a bulletin board, and it turns out we went to the same high school. I figured out from his description of his physics teacher, and I still know him. So I have nothing against that. On the other hand, it's funny because, okay, Chris has a friendship with Gary, not to talk to you about in the third person, Gary, but it's, since it's an online relationship, she's coming all the way to another continent. She relies on other online relationships. That's the problem with online relationships. As good as they could be one-on-one, -on -one, the whole network of them means that someone like Dev Shell is driving this person to you. That, that is typical of online relationships. So it's not that it's fake or not real. It's just that it ends up including a network where you're one degree away from Dev Shell. Yeah. Well, look, Pyro answered your question. Um, but whatever. Um, I'm going to move on to two other things. First, Mach oh, okay, Machine Ghost fixed this awful text color. Um, yeah, is in uh, I, I, oh no, inspired I am. Yeah, I, I did see your video. I just haven't, whoops, I didn't get to a response yet. Um, so welcome and such, if you're there. I guess he's reading, rather than listening. Well, I'm not typing. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you know, just a question of, about, um, you know, the one phrase in the book about um, the fact that we're, that, that we're sort of structured, 
to be pro-life, and that's basically his point. You know, we're, we're built by a DNA molecule to play the life game, so obviously we're sort of suited to it. And that's sort of what he was talking about in the sense that there we have to overcome our, our native disposition, which is to fight, which is to play the game, which is to be a player, which is to do what the DNA has constructed us to do. And so I think that's the point he was making. That there's a huge, you know, there's a huge bias built into us that is basically pro-life. Can you see me or hear me? I can hear you now, and I can see half of your head. So yes. Okay, so I've never been on stick cam before. I don't know what I'm doing on here. Okay. Hello and welcome. Well, you'll catch oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> the book's a trip. What I've read so far is it's um I need to like literally tune out everything in order to be open enough to even read it. Yeah, well, as he says, I mean, the second chapter is the book, really. The rest of it's all the inane little side arguments. So if you get the basic premise of the argument, which is basically the non-existent aren't in a bad place, and when you bring them into this world, you potentially are bringing them into a bad place. And so the non-existent aren't missing the good. Yeah, see, I get the logic in that. I completely get the logic in that. Um, and, and, and then from my standpoint, you know, you know where you can like live that or you can decide on your own not to have any more children. You gotta, you gotta recognize, I've never even heard of this concept till now, four children later. And it, see, you can speak on this because you've never had children. So you can like literally know you've lost that talk. Well, I know, but, but look, the other guy who wrote the, bu the other book, um, what's his name, Metamorph, I mean, his real name is whatever it is, um, I mean, he wrote a book on the subject, he had two kids, and he's now a, uh, an advocate of antinatalism, so, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing about the fact that you had kids that prohibits you from saying, well, yeah, I didn't really think about it, you know, I just did it. Yeah, I mean, I can totally agree with the premise where he states that when you have children, at least in my case, I didn't really think it all out in the way that he was speaking. You know, I agree with that. Yeah, well, that's um, really just the point. Is this isn't something you it, innately it think like about. When you're reading it, sometimes it feels like a who's on first episode. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> why you have to... That, that's all I'm saying, though, is that the book like is... The book is going to keep pushing that because that's the argument that it has to push. But I'm just saying the, the logic is really simple. So once you understand the basic premise, okay, that all the gain is non-existent in a non-existent universe, okay? Nothing needs in a universe of nothing, okay? So there's no, there's no possible way to gain because there's no deficit to clean up, basically. And so that's the real game and then when you do subject yourself to the vulnerability of a real world with real need and with real need that needs to be satisfied you also open the door to a huge amount of suffering so it's obvious if you do the math that the real world has two negatives and one positive where the non-existent world if you do the math has no negatives okay and no positives so it's a zero so you have a zero compared to a negative one so obviously the non-existence is, is zero, so that's a better place than the world that's a negative one. Kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's just basic, it's a logic equation that's just kind of simple. Yeah, I completely get all that. Well, now I'm just saying, that's all the book I is. I also understand that once, yeah, I know it's built completely on logic, and I have to admit that my biological disposition is more... I'm more of a um, emotional, abstract type person. I don't generally speak very logical. Like when I'm in college, I'm really outside of the box, abstract. Yeah, well, that, that's the whole point, though, is the book has nothing for you then. It'll, it's not going to feed 
any abstract notions. No, that's not true. Well, I'm going to argue that it is because true. The book is pretty. The book you. is pretty sterile in the sense that it just does, it's going to say that you're not allowed to be emotional. The argument is the argument. Okay. Well, that's my point. So when I started reading the book, I literally turned off that side of my brain. So I understand what that it is completely logical. Now here's my next question. Once you are here, which what he says is once you are here, you are in existence, by all means enjoy your life um, because you're here. Well, here's my point. For, for those of us that are here, do you feel that there is any way that we, as being here and being well aware of this, can do something about our own actions to bring about a better world beyond the fact that we're not going to have any... Yeah, but that's not the actions. subject of the book, okay? The, 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 he tells you that animal suffering sucks, but he doesn't write a book about vegetarianism, okay? But he obviously is a vegetarian. He's not writing a book, How to Live a Better Lifestyle. He's writing a book about the subject of antinatalism, that if you don't make a mess, don't you, you don't have to clean up a mess. Well, I'm just saying, you want a book about how to live a better life and how to feed the hungry and how to put band-aids on wounds, then read a different book. His book is about curing the problem, not treating it with bullshit. No, I don't want to treat it with a band-aid. What I'm saying is we are here right now. Right. Well, we're here right now, and what you can do is tell people not to have fucking babies. That's the point of the fucking book. Don't have babies. Babies. Well, then you can go fuck yourself. Yeah, I'm sorry to be harsh, but I mean, the damn book is titled Better That's Never to Have Been. Been. It's about antinatalism. It's not about electric cars. It's not about green. It's not about growing trees. It's not about cleaning the ocean. It's not about building bigger, uh, super electronic fucking dildos. It's not about any other kind of crap. It's about how do we solve the human sentient problem. And the solution is, don't make a mess. You don't got to clean up a mess. Yes, uh, yes, it is apparently the way I talk. <laughs> unfortunately, yes, this is this is unfortunately the way it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I is one rude motherfucker. You look charming. I have to say, you're looking charming, charming, charming. I like that little strappy thing. Oh, no, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, Pyro's worst nightmare. Oh, I'm creeping in, Pyro. I'm creeping in. It's very cute. Yeah, it's very cute. You're all color coordinated. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you have, like, little cute names, like... You call her Hooky, and she calls you Pookie. <laughs> I call her Wookie Wookums. <laughs> there we go. She calls you Snookum Pookums. <laughs> no, babe. <laughs> A babe. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, we have a nice intermission. We need some intermission music. Maybe some Mari can do that.
Intermission music playing Instead of being antinatalist, I just think parents, unlike mine, should uh, feel obligated to help their children and not be selfish about it. That's all I think. That is a lifelong Well, I'm just saying, if they can't figure that out beforehand, all right, <laughs> just they're going to figure out after. I did. That's the, my defense, Gary, is that of all the rare people that have had kids, I did realize that, look, this is a risk. This, I have to help these people, even if it goes wrong, or especially if it does, I have to help them no matter what. And that's, that's an obligation that I have to them myself, because there is this bringing them into the world. But see, I typically realize, well, I'm not responsible for putting Gary or well, you're responsible for the risk, though, Pyro. It's still a risk, and it's still bullshit, in my opinion. This is all just bullshit rationalization. Even if it's not, because I see how I was foolhardy in the sense of thinking I could master more than I did, but I'm not giving up on being obligated to it. So when you say it's selfish, it's more like, actually, I gave myself a burden that I will never, ever release no matter what. Yeah, I know, but I what if the burden decided. what if the burden was really nasty ass shit? Right. Autism and some other kinds of crap. Okay, for example For example, I in my life believe I've considered suicide. I thought, well you have to, to be a philosopher. And I can't consider that. After my kids were born, it's like even if my life is you know, even if I look antinatalist on it and I go sum total not worth finishing I have to put in to help other people in this world. I don't have a choice. So where does that come out in your calculation of life? You know, well, I know, but you're, you're talking about after the fact again, okay? I'm talking about <laughs> the better never to have been idea, not the what the fuck do you do after you've already been binned, okay? The after you've already been binned thing is a different conversation. You know, like dog the bounty hunter on the wrong side of law, then oh, I'm on the right side. If I'm in that position, I have to say, look, if you're on the wrong side of the law, you can do better. If these guys become born again, you should never go on the wrong side. I'm sorry, the people that made those mistakes can only say, look, if you're making mistakes, it doesn't mean you have to keep making them. Stop making them. It's not the same as saying, Look, you don't ever have to make mistakes. Well, well again, you're, you're, you're making you're my mistakes. argument, okay? They made uh, you're making my argument. Look at Metamorph, all right? He doesn't, he doesn't have any hesitance here. He doesn't dislike his children. He loves his children. He cares about his children. He'd do anything for his children, all of that kind of crap, okay? But he's still anti-natalist because he knows what he did was just stupid. In practical fact, it was stupid! Well, I'm just saying that I believe when you did stupid things in your life, all you can say is, hey, after you do something stupid, you can figure out something smart. Exactly. So all I want you to go, fucking goddamn do, do is say, Pyro, Pyro, shut up, Pyro, really? shut the fuck up. I, all I wanted you to do from the very beginning was just to say it was stupid. That's all I wanted you to do. I just wanted you to say it was stupid. I won't because it's like it was stupid, I was wrong, but then it's one of the most wonderful things. Well, well, whatever. Did, Again, like, all, I, all I asked for you to do was say exactly what you said in this fucking stick cam room in a fucking video, and you won't fucking do it, and that really pisses me off because you'll say it here, and you won't say it in the I video. Have said it. No, you haven't. Dude. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. You have never said the word stupid. You've never enough. said the word stupid. Well, that's no problem for me because stupid. the whole thing is it was. But the reason you don't like the way it comes out is because if I say, "Hey, it was stupid," I'm going to go. But it was one of the best mistakes I've made in my life. I've had mistakes that did not go good. But again, at all. the game. We're not These talking about your personal fucking life again, are we? 
We're not talking about whether you benefited from it. No, we're not. We're talking about the fucking victims, you dumb shit. Jesus Christ, you just don't get it. It's not about you, stupid fuck. Jerry, this is what's in, you know, I don't know why I give you a break over, like, I guess I give everybody a break, but somehow it's less infuriating than when other people, but, you know, the thing is, um, what do you mean a big mistake? I mean, my kids are people that understand the turmoil of the world, have their own turmoil, it's kind of beyond good and evil in their you know, well, let's say, Pyro, let's say you, know, you let's say you let's say you bought a lottery you, ticket, you Pyro. Let's say you bought a lottery ticket and you actually won the lottery. You could still know because somebody informs you that well, you know that most people who buy lottery tickets just waste their paycheck, lose their money. Okay, it's a complete losing game. It makes no fucking civilian sense. Nobody should be encouraged. Nobody should be encouraged to buy lottery tickets ever. It's a bullshit racket. Okay, it creates tons more losers than winners. It's a no-win game, really. It's nonsense. It's stupid. Okay, you could still do that. You could still be the winner of the lottery and just say, I was lucky. I was the winner. But it's bullshit. And if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't endorse the behavior. Gary, the thing is, I am not the winner of it. I was in a 20-year relationship oh. with a... Oh, I'm sorry, Pyro. Did your kid be born with a cleft lip like my sister was? Did your daughter die? Um, yeah, you. so far, you're a fucking winner, Pyro. Okay. My wife and partner for 20 years was physically violent and psychotic. So I can't exactly say I won. It's more like in spite of all the difficulties. I'm going by your kids' condition. I'm talking about the condition of your well, children. My dad, for example, my dad won't talk to me. He believes people can be psychologically damaged by being abused and by being in hard situations and become ruined. And I don't believe that. I believe people are, remain people and remain their potential. So, I did not have a good situation. I simply have found that I celebrate the people that ended up existing out of it. And but that's not a philosophical subject. I don't see a problem. It's not a philosophical subject then. That's just like saying, I won the lottery, the lotteries are okay, lotteries are good. That's, that's just dribble. How did I win the lottery, Gary? Again, I'm going to argue because your kid didn't be born. Your kid wasn't born autistic, was it, Pyro? Do you have an autistic child? I have an autistic okay, child? No. Here's what happened, though. I did not have as bad as it could be physically. But, you know, my parents divorced very young. They had a family feud. I was kept in Berlin by my mom, and then my dad kidnapped me. I got felt very guilty about that because I didn't call my mom. There was a huge <laughs> fight, right? We're not and talking I, about I, I you, Pyro. Just, just like stop it. it. We're not about you. We are talking about me. I'm telling you why my life is worth living even though I had all of these difficulties. Then I was 20 years in a relationship with a woman that actually was violent, throwing boiling water on me and shit. So, how the fuck am I having a blessed life? No, I am having. I a didn't life say where again. You're just ignoring the argument. That. You're not. And you're I not. Didn't. You're not getting it, Pyro. You still. You didn't survive it. You still haven't made the connection here. We're talking about the the fucking dice roll, and the dice roll impacts the thing. The new beings are the dice roll. They're the ones that will pay the check. All right, that's what I'm talking about. And what I'm talking about is the overall check that gets paid. I'm not talking about the part of the check that you pay. I'm talking about the check that's paid by the human race as a whole. Okay? That means all the negatives have to be counted. All of the disasters have to be counted.
You can't just go by your personal experience and say it's good because my personal experience is satisfactory. That's not good enough. But it wasn't good. I'm saying that because it was bad, I get and I survived it. I get to go. I learned from this thing. I saw the stark reality of it and learned. Well, how you uh, gain an education is again irrelevant to me. I didn't need to learn the hard way. I learned the easy way. It's not. To learn the hard way. You can educate your children. Your children. It's a reason to have children. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with this bullshit. It's a reason to have children so they can clean up the mess that exists in the human race. That's bullshit. I am not here to be your reason. Hey, Gary. I am not here to be your Jerry, it's not you. I want you to engage the fact that I can say, look, here, kids, here's a way to enjoy life so it's confusing. Oh, I don't even want to hear this shit. It. I don't want I to want hear to this shit. I can teach them to chase the pink balloon. Fine. Whatever. Jerry, I understand what you're saying. That we should be telling people not to have children because this world is a horrible place to bring them into. But I'm also saying for the children that are here, I would like to try to give them the best life that they can have while they're here. Well, that's a different that subject, though. Here. It's a different fucking subject. I do videos no, on different you, subjects. Vegetarianism is different than antinatalism. They're different the subjects. The way we treat each other is the reason why our world is shitty. No, the world is shitty because the sentient being is based on a DNA molecule's reproduction. It's senseless reproduction for no reason. None whatsoever. So whatever your perfect world is that you think you can create human beings they to live in... You have a perfect world and you have the wrong impression of me. Well, you keep arguing for it. You're saying that I have to talk about how people should live and love each other. That's not the fucking subject. No, what I'm saying is while we're here, before we get the human species, in, uh, you know, gone, why, does it, why do we want to fight with one another? Well, what the fuck else are we supposed to do? Now, if you're anti-natalist, that means that you're one in 10,000. One in 10,000 people on this shithole get it, okay? So you're supposed to just sit back as one in 10,000 and assume these other morons are going to figure out the truth without you yelling it in their fucking ear. The subject of the book is anti-natalism. It is not how to knit a mitten. I don't fucking care about that subject. I care about preventing the disease. I don't care about your fucking band-aids. Once you're here, you're here. Did you know that's in the book? He does discuss that. And he, he gives it proper acknowledgement. He says to you, once you're here, try to live an ethical life, you dumb fuck. But it's not the subject of the book. How am I mean to everybody? How the fuck am I mean to everybody? I'm only mean to assholes are finding some rationalization or who are changing the fucking subject. You're changing the fucking subject. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. What do we do if we're already here? Well, guess what you do? You argue with the assholes who might want to have a baby, and you tell them to Did shut their fucking vagina and asshole? think about it for a while. Open to the idea. People don't listen to people that call them assholes. Well, go somewhere else then, because that's what I do. I call assholes assholes. Why? Why? Because they're assholes and they need to know they're assholes. Do you think these assholes running the fucking world, okay, doing their arrogant nonsense, 
are going to figure out their dumb fucks without somebody saying right to their face, you're a dumb fuck. You have no right to have a baby, but you can't even take care of yourself, you drunk asshole. They need somebody to kick them in the fucking vagina and say, who the fuck are you to do biological experiments? Who the fuck are you to create a human being and take responsibility for the liabilities of that act? Where do you have your license from? Where do you have your credentials from? How the fuck can you control that situation, you dumb ass? They need somebody to kick them in the fucking head and say, Are you smart enough to do this? Are you competent enough to do this? Oh, yeah, I'm emotional because I live in a fucking world of 7 billion people who the majority of which are living in fucking shit because these assholes keep thinking they're accomplishing something when they're accomplishing absolutely fucking nothing but creating misery. Well, look, I've made the point as clear. I've made the point as clear as I fucking can. The straightest line to solving the problem. The straightest line. I'm just gonna kick you if you're gonna keep talking over me. The straightest line to solving the problem is not to create the problem. Period. That's the subject of the fucking book. You want to talk about something else? Then talk about something else. But that's not antinatalism, then. That's another fucking subject. Okay, I just want to say that, Carrie, I think you're being kind of mean. But, um, you know, the problem is not, like, that we need to stop creating people. The problem is, is that we have these people already and we just need to fucking deal with it in the most efficient manner. And the most efficient manner is what? What the fuck is the most efficient manner? Give them more money so they can have more babies. Yeah, with the UN right now is feeding like a billion people on this planet. And what are they doing with that food? They're making more babies. Oh, whatever, 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 okay? I don't want to be on this planet ever again. I started off as a fucking baby. I don't want to do it again, and I'm going to be forced to do it again because some dumb cunt is going to say it's not about the babies. It's about the fucking babies. Ugh, whatever. Whatever. Okay? Whatever. Why, why should I be anything else to people who are going to keep defending bullshit? I'm just saying when I'm talking about antinatalism, I'm talking about a cure for the disease, that's what I want the human race to invest in, period. No babies, no problems. Okay? You want to talk about how we clean up the mess when we keep making the mess? That's another subject. I'm willing to talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about it in the context of antinatalism. It just makes antinatalism not antinatalism anymore. Okay? It becomes friendism or loveism or let's take care of each otherism. It's some other ism, but it's not antinatalism anymore. I think I uh, stumbled upon what might be a solution today. Uh, a guy, a computer scientist, was talking about the advances in artificial evolution. We're getting to the point where within the next 50 years... Did you insult my girlfriend? Uh, well, she was sitting there talking about how, how she wants to pet babies or something. Of course I insulted her. She wants to, like, pet babies. Babies aren't the problem. <laughs> no. No, they don't grow into people. They stay little babies. <laughs> you, you're trying 
Alright, go ahead, dentist guy. Let the dentist guy finish. Somehow we're going to cyberize our brain and become something else. We become automated dogs that speak French. Yeah, well, the computer brain will be larger than any computer. It's a brain. Brain. It's a individual brains, they only last, they don't last long enough to get smart, and by the time they realize what's going on, they're dead. Whereas a computer brain will connect, last longer, and uh, its existence might be less destructive. But you don't need any brains to figure out it's a stupid, pointless addiction. What the fuck? This isn't a fucking secret anymore. We know what we are. We're the remnant of a DNA molecule replicating itself. It's doing it through us, through this process of addiction, where it obliges us to be hungry, so we eat. It obliges us to have sex, so we procreate. I mean, it's not that fucking complicated. And every ambition we have is somehow connected to some social hierarchy crapola that has to do with feeding our ego and being alpha something, and alpha this, and alpha that. It's all a big fat fucking lie created by a stupid molecule. What do you need a big brain for? Yeah, I didn't need a big brain to figure that out. I didn't need a cyber brain to figure that out. It's figured out. It's stupid. It's tic-tac fucking toe. You can't play this game. There's no winner. So you can't end it you can use the entire world as many times as you want in life. Oh, it says you, okay? It says you. I don't buy that for a fucking second. You do it the right way, you can sanitize this fucking planet. There's no fucking way with our technology that we can't sanitize this fucking planet. And there's no evidence that evolution will ever get to this point again, ever. Well, the only evidence... What I'm talking about is if life is going to exist, it can be really, really shitty or just kind of shitty. It doesn't have, like, there's a, there's a spectrum with how shitty it can get. Why should it be any kind of shitty? Why, there's the whole point of antinatalism, again, you're off subject again, is the fact that it is shit. There's nothing, you can't make anything out of it because it feeds no need that true. exists outside of itself. It creates need and then it solves half of the need it creates. It's a pointless, idiotic, stupid game, and it should be, it should, we should cease playing it. It's all red numbers, no positive numbers whatsoever. It can create nothing called a positive, because there is no negative until you bring a sentience into existence. When you, be a, you create a sentience, you create negative potential, and that is the only liability in the universe, is the sentience. But I was I was brought into I was brought into existence without my say so. And again, so you're not the subject. You always keep talking about you, 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 you. That is not the fucking subject. Look, dude, I have fucking scientific proof that we came from monkeys. All you have is a. It says a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, well, all you got is my foot up your fucking ass. I believe in Darwin. I'm glad I became from a bonobo. Not reasonable. Could you really sanitize the planet? I mean, there's life. Well, I really don't want to argue this, but yeah, I think you really could. I really think you could, okay? If you do the nuke thing even right, you could blow a hole in the core of the planet. Who the fuck knows what the fuck that could do? There's all kinds of ways you could treat this to... to strategically poison this shithole. But then are you sure there's no life in uh, outer space? I'm sure there's no life that's going to evolve back into some sort of sentient creature. Like I said again, we have no evidence that sentience is a common product of evolution. Sentience is a bizarre product of evolution. And by all reasoning and logic, it required a complex, an arrangement of matter we still don't even understand. It is so complex and bizarre. So there's no reason to believe sentience would be created again. There's no reason to believe it would ever evolve past the trilobite. We probably wouldn't be here if dinosaurs didn't get annihilated. That's a fucking fact. Okay, evolution would have stayed with the dinosaurs ruling the fucking world. We would have had no opportunity to do this free time, high intellectualism bullshit. Okay, there would have been no world for that. The only world that things could survive in, in worlds where things ran fast, not where things thought fast. 
Well, I agree. It's really rare. I mean, there, we're only a 10,000 year blip on a billion year scale, but there's elements in the universe and, and it only has to happen once, right? And it could happen again. Well, I'm not going to yeah. argue it. Whether it happens again is kind of irrelevant, okay? If you have one pile of dog shit in your living room and you clean it up, the, pie, the fact that there's going to be a second pile, it doesn't change the fact that it was smart to clean up the first pile. Right, but I'm, that's what I'm talking about is cleaning it up. You can, you can take care of it in a way that, I mean, you accept the fact that there's going to be more shit. See, what you're talking about is if you're going to kill the dog and then there's no more shit. And I'm saying that, well, if it's going to shit, then you might as well have a little... I know, but we have no evidence of this repeated shittiness happening. So, again, why should, you know, we should hang the whole thing on this whether or not shit is going to exist? Well, then build a fucking robot that eats shit, okay? So we'll leave a robot behind that just eats shit. So any possible shit that might happen, it'll eat it before it turns into a human being. Well, that's what I'm saying, because I think once the AQ, uh, robot intelligence surpasses ours, it'll probably kill us off. Well, regardless, I don't think there's any issue of intelligence. Again, this argument of intelligence, like some, there's some other processing that intelligence is going to use. No, all it's going to be able to do is calculate pi to a higher number. All it's going to be able to do is the superficial parts of intelligence. We already know what this game is. It's tic-tac-toe. You tell me what the biggest brain in the universe could do with tic-tac-toe. It would look at tic-tac-toe and say it's tic-tac-toe. Okay? The fucking end. I got no opinion on tic-tac-toe. There's nothing you can do here. It's a futile, stupid game. That's what the biggest brain in the universe is going to say about tic-tac-toe. There is no grander opinion. It's going to say it's a stupid game for fucking retards. All right, well, let's say it says that, and the computer makes sure that there is no more life, then the computer that could live off solar power doesn't have to go through the consumption and reproduction game. But the computer is going to say, why the fuck would it bother doing anything either? It would say, fuck it. It wouldn't bother recharging its batteries. Once there wasn't sentience to worry about it, just say, fuck it. I mean, you're going, to, you're going to assume the computer has all this fucking emotional programming, it's horny, it's hungry, it's all this other bullshit? I mean, come on. No, I'm not assuming that at all. But, I mean, to just deny that, that an existence... I mean, existence is going to exist whether we... Whether we are well, you or said not. it already. You said it twice now. You said it three times. You said it four times. No, I don't believe that, okay? So, yes, you can say there's other life in the universe. You can say we have to be around to go talk to it. We are never going to see it. I'm sorry, that's never going to happen anyway. None of that shit's going to happen. So, yeah, you can hang the whole fucking subject on your notion, and that's all it is, a notion, uh, that, yeah, there's some other mission for the human race to accomplish. we got work to do in the universe. Well, I say that's a fallacy. I say it's made out of nothing. It's might as well believe in God. It's just as silly. Uh, it's a cartoon of reality. The fact is, the game is over. It's a stupid game. We know what it is. It's reproduction for the sake of reproduction. It can go absolutely nowhere. It can accomplish absolutely nothing but clean up its own mess. It can eat its own ass, and that's all it can fucking goddamn do. It's made of okay, shit. Even, even if that's true, then there's still reasons to try and clean it. Put the shit in the box until the garbage is taken out. Though. Well, I'm just saying the solution is the the straightest line. So why should I advocate some secondary crooked line? I might as well advocate the straight fucking line. I mean, you want to have a plan B? Fine, we can talk about plan Bs. But again, that's not the subject of antinatalism. Is antinatalism the right philosophical solution to the problem of sentience? Yes, it solves the fucking problem. Okay. Uh, will the faggoty little wimpy human race do the right thing? No, because the stupid moronic human race is a bunch of selfish moronic assholes and of course they'll do the wrong thing. So now what's plan B now that the stupid morons are going to keep their stupid shitty world and try to make the best of it? Well, I don't know. Let's have a democracy and have a vote and all the morons will vote for American Idol. And so we'll all have to watch American Idol for 500 years. I mean, what the fuck do you want me to say? I mean, I, I'm supposed to have some sort of hope and promise. Oh, yes, let's have some more people in the world so they can go through the same bullshit and have these same arguments for 500 more years. Fantastic. I'm going to really enjoy being in stick camp for the next 500 fucking years arguing the same simple logic that the whole thing can't, you can't win. It's not a winnable game. It's an ego game. 
the fucking horny hungry game. Games are fun. See, that's the kind of crap you're going to get for 500 fucking years. Games are fun. They're going to write that on your nuclear bomb that's going to turn you green, asshole. And you'll deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve whatever shit the human race is going to dump on you, motherfuckers. You deserve every fucking bit of it. And that includes me because I'm one of you fucking scumbags. All right? You're just fucking too stupid. You can't take anything seriously. You've all been dancing and prancing and selfishly taking and, and stealing and abusing and exploiting and fucking everybody else over to get your little fucking graft. And that's all you're fucking about is how does it affect me? Well, I'm having a good time, so everything's just fucking fine. I don't care how many fucking animals get eaten alive. I don't care how many fucking animals die in the slaughter. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But all I give a fuck about is what I want. But isn't it more than anti-natalism? Because it has to be anti-everything, right? Anti-life. Well, no, yeah, exactly. Well, what else is anti-natalism? It's anti-any production of a sentient being, okay? It's anti-production of sentience. No more yeah, rats yeah. running the stupid wheel. I know you don't want to get into the Plan B discussion, so the only thing I'll say about it is that... Um, I like the Plan B discussions more than the Plan A because uh, I think there's been a lot of valuable stuff uh, that's come out of the talking about Plan B stuff in the past, such as education, economics, philosophy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, and I think that is about as futile as it can get because guess what? It's just not going to be enough. It's not going to be in time. Uh, and you got seven billion fucking morons, fucking morons. Well, it might not. It might not be enough, but you never know. I mean, after the next nuclear war, uh, nuclear, make sure I say that word right, um, if some people in a cave have the right um, bit of knowledge, they could have a little bit of a better existence than, uh, you know. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, so if the tiny minority of the human race, right? The rest of the human race will all die off. So here we are, the brink of success. We almost killed them all off, but no, there's a little kernel of human race still underground, and they're going to make everything all right. And you know they'd do the same thing. If we put them in space, they'd do the same thing. They'd run the same soap opera all over again. They'd be shooting each other over who gets the pussy. I mean, come on. You can't play the human game. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in uh, your old solutions videos. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's completely hopelessly futile. Well, it's not futile in the context of um, a, a group of people that either do it or don't. <laughs> a group of people that either do it or don't. That's exactly the problem. Are we any? I, I mean, I, I I ranted and raved about instant runoff voting for four years. Did it do any good? No. Um, what's the point? None of that shit's going anywhere. And those are just minor first steps. You got you got a hundred other steps to take. You know. I mean, so so where's the evidence of any of this fucking, you know, possibility for the human race? They can't get the simplest things right. So we ought to just beat the beat them over the fucking head as hard as we can uh, with the idea that that life isn't worth reproducing. That they got to be a little more humble and realize, yeah, it's fucked. There's no way we're going to make this work. We're going to blow the shit out of each other. And that's the fucking truth. Yeah, I mean, but there's no, you don't know yet what, what the effect will be of the, of the videos against them are not voting. Like, there might be a time where that actually inspires somebody. Yeah, might, might, blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying, if I'm going to fight, I might as well fight. I might as well, you know, there's no point in buying the, the, the whatever, the win four number. I might as well go for the pick six. You know, I might as well go for the big prize. And if I want to do something futile and stupid, I might as well fight for the win, not for the, you know, fifth place. That's like saying you want to push the biggest rock over the cliff. It's like almost impossible to move with one person instead of just throwing some rocks. Well, I'm just saying, we know it's yeah. going to be a fluke that gets any rock over the cliff. So my point is, if I'm going to depend on a preposterous fluke, I might as well be, I might as well be poised to win. 
I might as well put myself in the position to score the goal, you know. Yeah, but you've been on this topic for two years now, and if that, instead if you put your energy on, say, writing the book that you're going to write, then maybe the smaller rocks would just But the book I was going to write was going to end with the same exact conclusion. I mean, it's already in my videos. It's already there. I mean, the end conclusion is it's tic-tac-toe. It's not a winnable game. It's a DNA fucking molecule. Give it up. It's fail. The blueprint, you can't make, I, you know, I, I did the videos and I went through the ingredients and I said, yeah, look at these ingredients. Consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, and addiction. What the fuck? You can't make anything out of that. Well, there are the one in 10,000 people, the people who do try to learn, who read Wikipedia, who go on YouTube and watch these videos, who, you might reach more of those people with the book. Well, whatever. I might, you know, might be able to fart the uh, national anthem, and uh, you know, I'll get a million views, and so maybe I should do that. Well, no, because some things are better doing, worth doing than others, right? Well, I'm just saying, I, I, what the fuck? What, what am I supposed to do with this advice? It doesn't. There's no evidence. You're not giving me some sort of. Well, here's a plan B, Gary. That's just sure to win. <laughs> You're just saying, you know. Uh, I think my, um, you know, hopscotch chalk is better than your hopscotch chalk or something. I mean, this isn't going to get me anywhere. I mean, I have no way to measure uh, the the validity of your plan B. Well, you can look at other people who have written stuff in the past, and their their writings live on long after they're gone, right? Well, yeah, exactly. And what good has it done the human race? There's seven billion people, and we're completely fucked. So obviously all those writings are of shit in, in their effect. Yeah, but without philosophy, if nobody had ever written it down, we'd be even more fucked than we are. I know, but the only what am I going to write down? It's tic-tac-toe, fuck it, leave it alone, quit playing the game. Well, that's maybe your last chapter, but there's a lot of other stuff to write down before that. Well, whatever. I'm, I'm still not going to argue that there's some point in lying, okay? And it would just be a big fat lie to say that I think the answer is, you know, if we all rub each other's hiney, you know, in a clockwise motion, that everything will be all right. Well, it doesn't have to be all right. It just wouldn't be as she if there was one more great philosophy book out there. Well, whatever. I just don't think it's going to be a philosophy book that's going to be great. Um, because I don't think people want to hear the message. So, you know, I don't think that's going to be a win either. But whatever. I'm st I am haven't given up on any of that stuff. I'm just saying this is what I'm talking about now. And that's what I'm talking about. And the rest of it seems like the minor leagues. It seems like amateur. It seems like, you know, uh, you know, it just uh, it seems like a, a completely a waste of my time to be messing with the other bullshit because this is the game people understanding that it, the game is bullshit. That needs to be understood. That's a biggie. Well, like, let's say you play a game of chess or, or something, right? It's pointless, and but when you're playing it, you can put aside the rest of the world for a moment and play that game, right? And so you can partial out different things. Um, they're not necessarily important in the big picture, but they can still mean something in that moment. Yeah, but the only meaning is something to you because you just conceded because of your ignorance because you don't know all the moves because you don't know it's could you play tic tac toe now that you're an informed, educated human being and you know it's pointless because you can only make a loser you can't really you know you, you know it's a sure thing you can make it impossible for you to lose.